This is the Herb Business Podcast, episode 12. We back in this, well, shit, I'm, I ain't, I'm not, why well, I'm yeah. signing, I'm signing, I'm signing, here. oh, so, dog, I'm signing, oh, so, 1991, man. You nah, know what I'm saying? Nah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Nah, fuck that, fuck that. Nah, we back, we back. So, what's up, man? What's the deal, bro? You good? I see that shiny ball head over there, baby. Uh, oh, yeah, baby. Uh, It's seasoned, you know what I'm saying? I nah, got bro. the. I got the spit shine on it. I uh, uh, had, to the face, had to let the face breathe, you know, cut the beard. Man, you feel me? I'm thinking about cutting mine too, bro. But man, I Every now and then, you got to let it breathe, man. You got to mm-hmm. make sure everything's still intact under there. You know what I'm saying? Man, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it, bro. I think I'll look like a fucking rat or something, nah, bro, I if I cut that so, shit. Man, I man if I cut it, if nah. I cut it, bro, I'd be looking crazy. Hey. Episode 12, man, we back in this thing, bro. You know what it is. Uh, Shit. We got a few little things to talk about. Shemaine, man, Bruce, CB. Uh, you already know. And it's JV, you <laughs> <laughs> Season one. Season one, man. Episode 12. Shit. Uh, man, I got some shit to say real quick, bro. Okay. I got to get, get it off, off my chest, man. Get it off the chest. Sony fucked me today, man. What? Sony. Interactive gaming, whatever the fuck y'all call yourselves, man. The PlayStation 5, bro. Oh my God. Man, I got up this morning, man, trying to pre order that shit. As soon as I, I typed did. it in, <clears throat> bro, as soon as I typed the shit in, bro, come to find out the pre orders was supposed to start at nine o'clock this morning. They started yesterday at like fucking four o'clock, five o'clock. Damn. Walmart. Blew it up, then Target blew it up, GameStop, everybody blew it up, bro. So I just want to tell Sony, man, fuck y'all. Hey, I didn't even get my hopes up. Man, look, I I'm wanted one wait, too, I'm gonna wait till around Christmas time or even but look, after. But yeah. check this shit out, right? But and, and what's so crazy about it is, is bro, is now motherfuckers who pre-ordered the system is selling their pre-orders on motherfucking Amazon and on eBay for like two bands. Damn. Yeah, bro. Damn. Yeah, bro. You, you missed a lick. Lick. Lick, bro. So yeah, that's what's going on, man. I'm kind of upset about that shit, but it is what it is. I know we gonna I know they're gonna bounce back. They're saying they're gonna have some units in rotation. We'll see. I hope Xbox, Microsoft don't follow this whole this whole bullshit, bro. Because they they wrote PlayStation rollout has been fucked up since I'm talking about since the beginning of the year, bro, with the information coming out. All kind of shit, bro. So yeah, I just want to get that off. Get that off my chest, it man. Sounds like we're creating culture right now. Yeah, I think we is, man. I think mm-hmm. we is right about now. Yeah. Then we got uh, <clears throat> I don't know what else you want to talk about, man. Shit, whatever. I mean, we're going right. into it. Uh, all right. Hey, Pedraza Molina. Yeah. Nine nineteen. Yeah, on the nineteenth. Uh, boy, Pedraza, man. Pedraza say he forgot about Melina, man. What kind of shit is that to say about your opponent? What? <laughs> he, he said he forgot, he forgot about, about him. Yeah, man. He was like, after his last victory, he figured it was all the big and better things, and they brought this guy back up. I, you know, I guess I'll go handle business. You know what I'm saying? Mm, man, I don't know, man. 140, right? 140? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that shit right there, man. It's probably ESPN Plus, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, you know? You know who on you know who on the undercard? I don't know. I have no idea. I use it. I like to be surprised. I just turn on and see what I see. I don't want to go in with any preconceived notions. That way, somebody can impress me. Well, with that being said, mm-hmm. Pedraza, uh, Pedraza, whatever the hey, fuck, man. I'm chopping up names. I'm still hey, chopping hey, up names. Hey, hey, let it go. Fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. Jose, I'm just gonna call him by his first name. Jose, gonna kick the shit out of Javier. And it's gonna be done and over with. Point are blank. Wait, are you waiting for a rebuttal from me? Nah. Nah. Okay. I mean what? Pedraza, what he 27 and 3 with 13 KOs. Um, and his opponent is what? He's 22 and 2. Nine yeah. knockouts. Out of there, game over. Checkmate. This is about to be a hellacious beating. That Pedraza about to get his boy. And shit, they're gonna move on. That's gonna be a wrap. Hopefully he mm-hmm. don't kill him. Hopefully he don't kill him, and that's just what it is, man. Um, yeah, just beat him up real bad for entertainment just beat him purposes. Up. Entertainment purposes only. Beat him up real bad, man. 
Well, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <clears throat> Before we get into the next event, man. Mm-hmm. Um, you seen that press conference with Dana White talking about boxing? Dana White is always talking about boxing. That's how he that's how he promotes the UFC. It's a it's 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 kind of like clout chasing, you know? Mm-hmm. He's just really he, he's a he's a sound bite chaser, you know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. all that's what he does. I don't take anything he says seriously because according to Dana White boxing's been dead for about 10 years. Uh about yeah. 10 years. How long well, you have the UFC been going? How long the UFC been running? About, about 20 years, man. 25. 20. Maybe. 20. 20 25. Yeah, he's been saying, let's just say, he's let's just say saying about 25. boxing's dead. He's been saying boxing's dead as long as the UFC's been running. So yeah. that's a long time to die. We it, that's a that's a hell of a terminal illness. Oh boxing's yeah. got there. And they're hanging on. So well look though. Fuck the clap, but I, I got I want to say something about the shit for, for a couple of reasons, right? You know, I've been having some people blowing me, blowing my DMs up, saying that we need to talk about it because, you know, um, there ain't too many boxing podcasts out here that really do what we do. You know what I'm saying? Basically, talk our shit. We get our shit off. You know, and we we keep it moving. You know what I mean? The thing is with Dana White, Dana White don't understand that he's a promoter. He's basically monopolized MMA. Whether he want to say it or not, whether they want to classify it as that or not, that's their fucking business in, in, in the sport of MMA. That ain't got shit to do with boxing. But he likes to use these examples of what the UFC has done in a sport of MMA. No, bro, you can't do that. Because for every promoter that's in boxing, they hold the same kind of weight in, in that sport, right? With MMA... Boxing, with, I mean, is, in, boxing is free enterprise. But no, it's different than that. It's a little bit deeper than that, right? The UFC is the major leagues of boxing. I mean, an MMA, period. Point yeah, blank. Yeah, it's a monopoly. You know? It's a monopoly. Exactly. Boxing it's, is free enterprise. You know, you got everything exactly. that can come up and do his thing, yeah. Exactly. So in boxing, I mean, Bob Arum, Eddie Hearn, Oscar, Floyd and them, you know, uh, uh, Al Heyman, all these dudes, man, they can, they, can, they can single-handedly, you can say that they doing the exact same shit the UFC doing in MMA. In MMA. Right, but boxing no no one promoter in boxing has a stronghold on on the sport of boxing like the UFC has in MMA. So when he be trying to compare the two and this that and the third, I think somebody need to call him out on that shit and say, bro, it's it's too it's the, the situations is fucking different, bro. It's different. You came in with a with a fucking backer. You came in with two fucking brothers who had a whole bunch of money. You dig what I'm saying? took advantage of a situation, ran with it. Now, the only thing, the thing that I can say about him is he, they reinvested into the UFC, not the fucking sport, like he said. You understand what I'm saying? A motherfucking free, or somebody who is not affiliated with the UFC can't come in there and, and, and motherfucking benefit off the UFC unless they sign a fucking contract. So all this shit about... So all this shit about reinvesting in the sport. No, you didn't reinvest in the sport, bro. You're reinvesting in your company so your company can benefit from the fucking progression of the sport. You know what I'm That's saying? Facts. That's just but what I, it is. I, let, me, uh, let me run this by you. Would it be fair to say that Al Heyman attempted to do what Dana White did when he came in with his backers? And uh, started the PBC. Mm-hmm. I mean, no, no, no. I'm gonna tell me, you why. Let me let me let me lay it out though. Let Go me ahead. lay it out. Th- then you then you counter me. Okay. He came in with the PBC, Premier Boxing Champions. Okay. And to this day, I still believe they had every intention on creating their own championship belt. When they yeah. started that thing, they were in-house fights only. They're trying to monopolize the game. When they, when, when you hear things like, that's the only reason Terrence, Terrence Crawford fights have not happened with PBC fighters. They wanted to force him to sign with Al Heyman. Mm-hmm. That, and they're trying to do a lot of fighters like that. Once they get, if they could have achieved what they attempted to do, 
we would have the same situation in boxing. They came in and tried to do it. They're kind of backing off the stance now for uh, competitive reasons because they're kind of like running out of fights in, in certain weight classes, so they got to go cross-promote. Mm-hmm. But when they don't have to, they don't cross-promote very often. <clears throat> All right. Boxing landscape will never allow that. First of all, there's too many sanctioning bodies. It's too many fucking belts. Yeah, and they were trying and to... PBC was beefing with the WBO. Well, here's the thing too, though, bro. It's not just it's not just that, bro. It's it's you have in one way class, right? You got fucking Lord knows how many belts, bro. I'm I can I, I in 147 right about now, man. I'm talking about from super champions to regular champions to diamond champions to franchise. That's what, champions. That's what Errol Spence was talking about that time. But yeah, check it, this, but what if what if the PBC just made a fly ass belt? Said, I mean. You know, but how far? But but I'm saying, how far can it go? How far can it go when it come down to when when you when when everybody is not the thing is, but boxing has been so open for so long to the point where people won't even buy into that shit like that. They want it. You got some people when they. I remember that. I remember that championship talk, the championship belt talk. People was in boxing groups and I'm talking about hardcore fans, not the casual motherfuckers. They was all saying that wouldn't be a real belt. That's not a real fucking belt. That's not a traditional belt. With, it's, with boxing. it's not a real belt until it's a real belt, though. That's what and I once, say. Once it, once it gets out there, <laughs> once somebody attains it and defends it, then people gonna start buying into, it, especially if the fights are good. Yeah, but yeah, I think I think it takes the fans. I think it's gonna take the fighters, and I think I think it'll take the promoters to get on board. But they won't do that shit, bro. It's just that's just that's just the nature of boxing, bro. MMA, you can do the shit in MMA, man, because. For a long period of time, it wasn't no no other players in the game. See, that's the thing. That's the the, the crazy part about getting on getting in on something from the ground floor and building it up. You can control it. Dana White did that. I'm not taking that away from him when it comes down to MMA. But that's why he backed this fucking bald headed ass off of trying to enter into boxing. It's not because boxing is dead. Boxing is a fucking cesspool where you have a lot of red tape. You have a lot of powers that be that control this shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's not necessarily controlled about the money all the time. Because you got a lot of people. Yeah, you got a lot of hustlers, man. And it's not necessarily controlled about who can make the most money all the fucking time. Because we do know that they have people that can draw or whatever. But these motherfuckers not fighting actively like that. You know, you got some promoters won't even work with them. You know what I'm saying? That'll put asses in the seats. That'll put ratings on the TV screen. But they won't deal with them because... They, because that fight is affiliated with somebody else. So it's not necessarily like he said it's a fucking going out of business sale. No, not necessarily. I think it's a lot of pride and ego in boxing, and it is a hard task to fucking take, bro. A lot of people didn't even know what Al. A lot of people didn't even know Al Heyman fucking plan, bro. And it was hating on it. <clears throat> Eddie Hearn, <clears throat> same difference. I'm coughing, but it's not uh, COVID. Just want to let everybody know that I'm fine. Negative. <laughs> but look though, now it's just like with Eddie Hearn and the zone. Right? Man, everybody was hating on Eddie Hearn when he was kind of promoting and pushing this idea before they even knew what the service was. You know, you know let, what I'm me, let me t- let me tell you something, man. A lot of that, you want to know what that is. See, people have uh transformed from fans of fighters to now they actually align with certain promotional companies. So you have the Heyman faction, PBC, they're going to back everything PBC does. You have the uh, Golden Boy faction. You got the people from overseas that's going with her. You know what I'm saying? And you got Mm -hmm. you, you good old make America great again, guys with Aaron. And yeah. Yeah, it yeah. goes back to, again, boxing being racially divided. You know what I'm saying? Allegiances, yeah. lines are drawn, and people just go with what 
the name they know. So if mm-hmm. if Al Heyman does something, there's going to be a group of people that always support it. It's going to be a group of people that are always skeptical and, and got something to say. If when Eddie Hearn does something like the move with the zone, he's got his supporters, and then you're going to have a segment making noise to the contrary. It's just how it goes until they get it going. And then if it if it flops, then you got a group that's going to say, I told you so. Yeah. You know, hey, back to the drawing board, man. It, it, it shit happens. It's what it- but total control over boxing, the point is, total control in boxing like the UFC have over MMA never would, let, would never happen. It's just too much, too much independency in this, in, in that game. You know what I mean? I and do. One hey, time, you're right. Yeah, too much. But it, something has uh, pissed me off on my timeline. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happened? This guy, Mar- Mario Cazares, talking about he's going to end the Mexican legend himself. Chavez, you? Uh, the, listen to me. The in and out eating, cereal smashing, mm. weed smoking, most electrifying man in sports entertainment today. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Mm. This guy's talking big trash. He says he's going to end Julio. Now, this guy. This guy here is 30 years old with 12 professional fights, man. Hmm. And you out here talking this big noise. Your claim to fame is beating Canelo Alvarez in the teenage years. Hey, man. The, the pigeon has flown the coop. Those days are gone, man. You're going to your, get your tiki torch out there, buddy. Yeah, I'm right. here to tell you. Chavez <laughs> Jr. is not fucking around. That Hey, I got my money on Chavez Jr., Chief. I He's making I a comeback. That. He's making a that. comeback. It's about to be I great think. again. Man, what? I'm not going to lie, bro. I'll take that. I'll take that, bro. Because I think, oh, boy. Man. Oh, boy, tripping, man. You're talking about he about to end him? What? He said he going to end the kid. <clears throat> man, look. Well, we'll see how that shit go. But I know one thing. Chavez is about to beat the brakes off that motherfucker, man. Yeah, man. Hey. You know, Bob Arum saying that he trying to get fighters, he trying to get fans in the seats for Wilder and uh, Fury 3 on December yeah, they 19th. they're going to need them. That's a, that's a big, uh, that's a big uh, purse they got to pay out there. Yeah, they trying, man. I'm, but I'm trying to figure out how it's going to go because... Well, let me, let me tell you this. So, you know, college football is back going. Mm-hmm. They got fans in the seats in certain states. It just depends on where you go. So we got, like, you can do 25% capacity. So I'm going to a game on Saturday. Uh, oh, really? I think the capacity is like 35,000 maybe. So 9,000 people can come in. So that it's, ain't bad. it's ways. Yeah, it's ways to do it. It can be done. It's not, uh, it's it's not, not a pipe dream. Yeah, it's not a pipe dream. But well, man, the well, thing is though, they should do that same shit for uh, Loma and Lopez. Uh, they should. They because should. But see, now the, the tricky part is it's indoors, so I don't know if that mm. affects it. If that yeah. if that changes things, or anything, but because football is outside, so I don't know. Mm. Just and running that, of, just just putting that out there. And speaking of Loma and, and uh, Loma and Lopez, they don't have no rematch clause in the contract. Hey man, one and done. One and done, get it out the way. One and done, you know what I'm saying? Hey, this make this, crazy. then it's, you, it's really some high stakes in that fight. It really is, man. So really Lopez is. either gonna make his bones or he's gonna, you know what I'm saying? Or Lomachenko's gonna submit his legacy. Hmm. Damn, man. Because you know, if, if Lomachenko <laughs> at this point, man, he doesn't have time for, for, for rematches or trilogies. You know no. what I'm saying? No, he got, bro, he, he don't don't keep, he got to keep building. He, after he beats this guy, he, he's moving beat on. Him. Probably... Beat him. Wait, wait, beat him. Oh, wait, what? What? <laughs> what? Beat him? Yeah. So, after, no, bro. After he take this epic L, that'll be, what, his second in his career? Out of there. Get him out the way. I don't really think Loma is going to go too far after that. He's going to be begging for a rematch after Lopez put them paws on his ass, bro. 
He's going to be begging for one. Oh, yeah, he's going to be begging. That, that hat is frying your brain. It's too much America on your mind. She Loma Chinko is going to display his plethora of skills in the ring that night. He's going to leave. He's going to leave Tiafimo Lopez bewildered, befuddled. Uh, he's going to be looking for the Matrix. He's not going to know where the punches are coming from. He's going to be sidestepping, uh, uh, hitting him in the body, the head. Man, that boy going to think it's three or four people in that ring, man. Man, Lopez is about to tear his ass out the frame, Cadillac. Listen. And when I'm talking about, man, I'm talking Listen. about hellacious, hellacious, quality, grade A, ass beating, man. Bro, bro you gotta seen that? We got to put something on this. We got to put something on this. This is what we going to do, bro. What are we what I'm thinking? This is what I'm thinking, bro. I'm thinking, man, we need to go ahead and we could put, you play PlayStation, right? Yeah, you play PlayStation. So what we do is, man, we'll put a PS4 on, PS5 on it. God damn. Hey, man, look. That shit kind of stiff. That's kind of stiff. stiff. Hey, hold on. <laughs> Wait. That's Come pretty stiff. That, that's that's kind of stiff. Gonna jump out there like that? Come on. Damn, that's that's kind of stiff. That is that stiff? That's might be a little too rich for my blood, man. Come on. Woo! Man, all right. Let's, well, let's, let's dial it down. Dial it down and that's the cowboy. Well, let's see, let's let's see. Let's see what else we could do. Uh maybe we could let's let's put a copy of our favorite game on the line. All right. Let's do that. All right. Let's do that. We can go let's there. Do. We can go yeah. there. Let's do it. Let's do that, bro. All hey, right, some Tuesday, hits. hey, Tuesday's episode, we'll name the game of our choice. That's what I'm talking about. Look, the um, some hit my timeline a few minutes ago too. Just then, the Mike Tyson biopic will not include any reference to Robin Givens. They might as well not even fucking shoot the goddamn movie at this particular point. It's done. It's not a biopic now. Yeah, it's not a biopic. So it's like this the one. This the one with Jamie Fox. Yeah. Will not include Robin Givens because she issued a legal letter to so, the camp. Do you know who? Do you know who should be in it? Then there should be a love interest named uh, Bobby Spivens. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, like uh, or or Roberta. Give love or some shit like that. Just remix it and tell the story without her name. Look what you know said. what I'm saying? Fuck it. Look, Mike Tyson. Look, Mike Tyson was just on his podcast a few minutes ago. He was talking about it, right? Now, what I'm trying to figure out is, well, he wasn't talking about it. They was basically having reference to it, right? Hold on a second. It says the paper reported that the letter stated that Gibbons legal team demand that Mr. Tyson cease and desist from further defaming Miss Gibbons and to put those producing, writing, and directing the proposed Tyson biopic and those producing Mike Tyson's podcast on notice that they are to refrain from portraying misgivings in a false, negative, and defamatory light. While she attempted, while she has attempted to move on, she still finds herself fighting the abuse, demeaning, and false accounts of their relationship by Mr. Tyson nearly 35 years later. It is time for Mr. Tyson to let this marriage be the relic of the past that it is. Bro, let that me tell you something. Has no, that lady has no jurisdiction over him telling his story. No. Name, name that helpful Bobbin Gavin. Bobbin gave it. Yeah. And called the fucking day. Look though, bro, but like she should be happy though, man, to be to be real. Nobody been checking for her, dog. She's a dead actress. She can't get work in this business for whatever reason. I mean, I think she needs to just calm down, bro. And then on top of that, bro, she done told her. She, she done told her. Probably, bro. She's been throwing that coochie from the free throw line for about 30 but years. How, but my thing is, this is so what I don't like. Pro- she smashed all the producers that can give her a job by now. Yeah. There's nothing new under the sun. Uh, she wasn't that talented to begin with. Yeah, I believe uh, Boomerang could have been ten times better without her. Could have put yeah. anybody in there. Yeah, uh, she's know, not a trade. I, I wouldn't go there. I wouldn't go there. 
I haven't seen it in about 30 years, man. I don't know, look, look, know how look, she look. Look, let's not lie. Because uh, Robin Gibbons. Uh, no, she was she fine really... back in the day. Oh, okay. Well, no, yeah, I she... haven't seen her lately. I ain't I seen mean, her. I'm not going you around here looking for look. pics of old Robin Gibbons. Two yeah. dead batteries. Two dead batteries can't start no car, JD. Hell nah. Hell nah. But I want to say this, though, too. Like, now, she done told her version of the story on I don't know how many motherfucking occasions, man. And out of a sudden now, you know, I don't know if her, I don't know if she feels as though her version of the story and the events that happened fell on deaf ears when she told it so many years ago. Up until like recently, she was talking shit. Now you're telling this man who really got a resurgence in the sport of boxing. Popularity. Or, popularity. As a whole, he found another lane that he in, and he and he being successful at it. And I th- I think that she's scared that his version is gonna reach a lot more eyeballs and a lot more ears than her yeah, version. Yeah, because nobody's listening to Robin. Gibbs. Yeah, nobody listening to her, bro. But this that goes back to that's go back to what I was saying, bro. Like about the men and women thing. Like I understand women get fucked over, all, fucked over all the time. Don't get it twisted. I got a daughter, bro. Ain't what I'm saying. So I don't want nobody to come on here underneath in the comments and talk this shit about I'm being insensitive or nothing. But I am going to say this, though. You can't fucking censor a man's point of view of a situation just because you think that your situation means a lot more. Your, your version of whatever the, whatever the fuck happened means a lot more. That man got just as much right as fucking Robin Givens to speak his fucking piece and say what he thought happened in that situation. But when you yeah. putting all of these people involved, sending legal documentation to this motherfucker, and come on, bro, you ain't got to do well, all that shit. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about how shitty that movie's going to be if they can't talk about that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the movie's going to be, that's bro. like a whole segment of his life. Bro, that's a segment of, bro, that's a segment of his motherfucking, that's a segment of his motherfucking life that's that was real significant. History. Yeah. 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 Uh, Eddie Hearn hopes. Canelo Golden Boy Riff can be resolved in time for a 2020 bout because, you, as you know, two of his fighters were in the running for a fight with Canelo, uh, mm-hmm. Callum Smith and Billy Joe Saunders. So he wants to see uh, the Mexican pugilist resolve his issues with his promotional company and the network in time uh, so that they can get back in the ring. He's one of the biggest star. Uh, Hearn stated, <clears throat> and I quote, Hopefully it gets resolved and we can see Canelo back in the ring. He's one of the biggest stars in the world of boxing and is a terrific fighter. I think the plan is still for Canelo to box in November or at least this year. If he does, I've got my fingers crossed they pick Callum or Billy. Well, And then he stated that if they don't, they will both, he will try to uh, line up a fight with those two guys against each other. Okay, well, let me just say this real quick. Mm-hmm. Eddie Hearn full of shit. Because if he if he want this whole problem if he want this problem to be resolved, since he's so tight with the owners of the the partners at the zone and whatnot, tell them stop. T- tell them to stop rejecting the fucking opponents. Well, let's see. Is he really that tight with them, or does he just have yeah. a deal, just like Oscar? I mean, had a deal. I mean, I mean, he was just he was their fucking mouthpiece. He was able to he was able to offer contracts to different people to bring them on the network. If he was that tight, those were his fighters. So if he was that tight with them, they would have okayed it. Well, it's I, I just, obvious those guys, those guys don't give a damn what Eddie Hearn's talking about. They're looking at those losses. Now, I, well, you, you got a point there. You have a point there, bro. But I still say too, Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn have a back channel to the motherfuckers, man. He he should be able to sit down, talk to him, and tell him, look, man. Pay the motherfucking man what you own. Approve one of my fighters and let's get it on, man. Maybe he's sending a message to them through this statement. Oh well, yeah, that's probably that's probably the case too. You know what I mean? Yeah. What, what, what we got this weekend? We got Lubin and Gasha, right? Goshe. Goshe. Stop Gaucher. fucking up that man. That's a black oh, I'm man. Chop- man, I'm chopping him out. He don't have look. Oh, he don't have he black. Is he up. black? Yeah, yeah, I can see you messing up some foreign guys' names. This what, what's his name right oh, here in America? Bro, Terrell bro. Gaucher, man. Terrell Gaucher? That is not a yes. fucking... Bro, let me tell you something, man. That's a black what's man. What's his record? What's his record? What's his record? His record? He's a... That, does his record go make him black or white? 
Yeah, yes, it will. Yes, it will. That's going to determine if the motherfucker trash. He's 21 or not. and 1. He's 21 right. and 1. Oh, 21 and 1? Okay, well, I need to correct myself and fix the name since he's 21 and 1. I thought he was going to be, I thought he was going to be like fucking 11 Listen, and 4 or something. He's some a 30, 33 year old 2012 Olympian. 33 year old Olympian. 33 years old, and I never heard of him. The motherfucker trash. I don't trash. know why. No, because guess what? Here's the, here's the, uh, the ironic part about this fight, this matchup. Mm -hmm. All right. 33, bro. 30 Go fucking three. Shea. Listen, Goshe and Lubin were both undefeated. Mm. And they shared a card on October 7th, 2017. Goshe came up short against Iris Landy Lara for the WBA title. That was his first loss. All right. And Lubin he went to, he got he went to and, and then Lubin got. Smoked. Smoked. <laughs> Smoked. By Jamel Charlo. All that happened on the same card. So now they're coming around. These two are going to match up, and the winner is going to reinvent themselves and go on to bigger and better things. And if Goshe loses at 33, this might be the end of the road. All I'm going to say is this. The summary of this whole fight is no matter who win, no matter who win, they running up, they gonna walk their ass right into another lion's den. And Jermail is gonna be waiting on whoever's there. And somebody turkey is gonna get smoked. Cause neither one of these motherfuckers is gonna beat Jamel Charlo. I'm sorry, bro. That's just what it is, bro. Whether they go straight to him, whether they fight somebody else to get to him, whether they do they go any other direction. All roads lead to Jamel Charlo. He is the king at 154. Like it or not. Oh, you don't man. have to like it. But you don't have to love it. But you better respect it. Because he's the best thing going today. That Woo! That is true, but he wouldn't go, you know what I'm saying? Those guys wouldn't be in line to fight him next. You know what I'm saying? So I think Jamel Charlo... What's the deal with uh with, with with my boy Heard? What's the deal with him, man? Man, I seen him out here. I seen I seen that motherfucker out here, man, at the Walmart in the uh <laughs> he was I wonder why the fuck he was out here though, bro. I didn't even talk to him too long. I just dapped him out. We we chopped it up for a second and he was um he was just like he was training or some shit, and that was it. And I found it ironic because I pretty much know, I mean, I find it odd because I pretty much know when fighters be coming in and out of this motherfucker, man. <clears throat> so I'm trying to figure out what he was down here, what he was doing. Was he training with Mel? I don't think so. Was he? Is he training with Ronnie no, Shield? Mel, I Mel don't, don't so. do that. Mel don't do that. Fret now. Yeah, shit. I seen a motherfucker like we like we were shopping it up in the frozen section in Walmart a while, not too long ago, matter of fact. And um, I'm trying to figure out. So so he's got off mom's couch. Well, I know he was out here. I know he was out here and I looked that motherfucker dead in his face and I said, God damn, man, hurt. He was just like, yeah. I was like, man, what's up, bro? I said, what you doing? Damn, what you doing? You, you a long way from well, home. You, I'm gonna tell you, you did a piss poor job of investigative reporting. Bro, you I didn't, didn't find I, out what the fuck he was doing out here. What man, I doing? had, come on. I had, my, I had my daughter with me. I couldn't really chop it up. She was cutting up in the stove. So I was like, fuck it. But I was like, man, I, all I did was I said, what you, what you doing? You a long way from home. What you doing out here? He's like, oh, I'm training. And that was it. Because he had, they all had on the swift jumpsuits and shit and all that. So I was like, all right. So I was trying to put it together myself, but I ain't really do too much investigating and asking different people, man. I'm going to yeah, let him stay out the way. That's, 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 uh, that's a strike. Yeah. That's a strike. But he, if he ain't had no fight on the, if he ain't got no fight on the books, I clearly and unequivocally don't give a fuck. <laughs> what he doing, really? Hey man, you know I think the boy by he, he acts like he doesn't even want to fight anymore. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Now he gonna fight. I think right now, man, he just one of those fighters that did that didn't have a plan. And a lot of these other guys, you know, they had plans laid out. They sticking to the plan. Some dates got messed around. I don't even think that he had nothing on the books for early in the he, year. He, anyway, I so said I, like, he didn't even want the rematch with Julian Williams. Didn't know that. You didn't know that? Didn't know that. Because I, I, at that time, I was already, I kind of knew Julian Williams. I thought Julian Williams was going to put up a fight to not fight him and want to move on to get away from him. Because I think in a rematch, Jared Hurd beat the shit out of Julian Williams. I think Julian Williams just 
he did. He, he showed up to fight that night. But and Julian with and, and 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 exactly what I just said. Julian Williams moved away from where he didn't fight hurt again. And his ne- his next fucking fight in his hometown, he got his ass Dog, stopped. They were supposed to fight on December fourteenth, and Jared Hurd withdrew. Why though? I didn't know that. Well, fuck it, Faith. He- he Julian Williams gonna lose any motherfucking way, but why the fuck would he and cause and he did lose. Why did he pull out of that fight? I don't know, man. It was some rumors about uh the drug testing and uh Oh nah, say it, it ain't so. Say it ain't so, man. No, no, it, it was rumored that he didn't want to participate in Nevada testing. That's mm. that's what it, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. Well, but I don't know. You know, what I'm going saying? up on that shit, but I ain't gonna put no tag on him. I mean, he never pissed dirty before, right? Nope, but he is huge for the weight class. Oh man, yeah, that motherfucker is kind of big, man. Because I know I'm like six feet, and that motherfucker was like, that, that, that's a big, that's a big nigga, man. <laughs> so yeah, so I don't know, man. <clears throat> we'll see. What he got on the books, but I think I think no, I ain't. I don't want to put that on that he don't want to fight nobody right now. I think he's still in the game. He didn't want any parts of Julian Williams. Uh, he did suffer. That was a that was a breakdown. Like that was a systematic breakdown mm-hmm. that Julian Williams laid on him. But Julian Williams has since lost the belts to Rosario. Yeah, and now Rosario is gonna fight Charlo. I actually think Heard matches up. A little better against Charlo than he did against J Rock. Mm. Okay, I really do. I, so I, I agree. Think, I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think Look, that would be a good good fight. It, it, it probably will. It probably will. Um, man, did you hear about that Mayweather and Logan Paul bullshit? I did, and I didn't. Oh, I, I heard something. But then I just like, I don't really care. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not gonna give it any energy because, you know, let, if, if Floyd wants to, you know, make some money and fool uh, Logan Paul's millions of YouTube followers and trick them out of some cash, more power to him. I'm not gonna talk about it. It's really not relevant boxing news because Logan Paul is not a relevant <coughs> boxer. It's not a threat at all. It's nothing for me personally to see there you know what i'm saying i don't really yeah. care yeah i feel the same but way. there is a faction of people there's floyd's staunch supporters and there's uh the pack tards the, the guys who just look to compare everything that that want to say now why is floyd picking this guy and there's errol spence is out there this, 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 this. So mm, a lot of yeah. fuckery when Floyd's fucking what forty four or some shit? How old is Floyd now, man? Man, Floyd got to be at least he forty three right now. He's an old man. <clears throat> Why the hell are we even trying to hold him to that standard? Manny Pacquiao's active. He's old too, but he's active. When you when you, once you stop at that age, it's over. It's over. You gotta fight side shows like Logan Paul, or you're gonna get killed. Yeah, you're right about like, that shit. Like, man, what? Woo, Lord. Like man, Mike, he, Mike Tyson almost killed his damn trainer, didn't he? Yeah, he almost killed this. Mike Tyson almost killed this trainer. And Roy Jones running around this motherfucker looking every bit of his age. Bro. All right. I don't know. I don't know if if uh Roy Jones motherfucking ass, man, got a battery in his back because everybody putting all of this behind putting all of that noise behind Tyson training videos and shit, right? Roy Jones, man, he dropped a couple of videos on uh, on ESPN. I mean, yeah, on ESPN Ringside Instagram page, right? Man, um, after watching them videos, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that Mike Tyson is looking kind of dangerous right about now. And Roy Jones is looking... He looked like he might be in some trouble. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if it was a, I don't know if the videos that he dropped was like some, 
trying to show he was trying to showcase himself. Roy, Roy looks better against some opposition. His his, his herky jerky style will get the guy gets you off balance. He hold that head to the side. He get the going. He throwing that lead right. The check left hook. The check left hook was coming up short on the pad. Yeah, and man. To catch the guy coming in. I, I don't know. And I don't but know, man. I'm gonna give the legend. I'm gonna give the legend the benefit of the doubt. Okay. I want to see it. I don't want to see it, but I want to see it. Okay. If yeah, that man. makes sense. Does it make sense? It I, makes sense. It makes sense. I'm trying to. I. I. Man. I'm. I'm. I watched the videos, man, and I was kind of lost for words. I was like, well, uh, is this well, something, is this, is this a showcase? If you, if you lost <laughs> the words, don't say that. Yeah, I'm, but I'm just, you know, it, it looked like Tyson, man, might, uh, it might be, it might be, it might be some issues. Let's just say that. So, yeah. Might be some complications in the ring. Might be, man. I'm Medic! Medic! Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Motherfucking Roy Jones, dog man, but he a legend though. So first, and then you know he said, you know, and you know he said over the weekend too, like you know over the weekend they interviewed him, mm -hmm. and he was saying that he think he made a mistake by signing a fight. He trying, he trying to draw you in. Yeah, yeah. Basically, you know, I well, he said something about you know that he that he probably made a mistake because you know he's still a bigger. Uh, Mike Tyson's still a bigger guy. He's still the most aggressive and most explosive fighter the ring has ever seen. He's he making it sound dangerous. But I don't know, man. I, I, <clears throat> is he is he saying that shit to so when he lose, he got an excuse? Or is or he saying say that it, shit? When he wins, it's a huge feat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I don't know, man. I'm just waiting but to see. But I will it. say this. Roy Jones Jr. has been knocked out five times by lesser men. Whew. You said it, and I didn't say it, bro. I'm just saying that's a fact. Yeah, it's bro. a known fact. And uh, Mike Tyson is not throwing softballs out there. Oh, no. He going for the gold medal, baby. He's going for the gusto. He going for, that, he going gold for medal, that He going for that gold medal Ryan Garcia wants. Yeah, but he going for that gold medal, man. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we'll figure it out. I hope. I hope... I hope both of them come out safe. I hope both of them go in there. I hope they both make the fight, get to the fight without no issues. It's already been postponed one time. I hope they perform well, get the fans what they want to see, and leave, you know, on their own two feet, bro. That's Roy hope calling them. you right now, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, bro. I think he oh, thought yeah. that I was... Yeah, I think that he was trying to... I think he, <laughs> he probably heard me about to say some shit. <laughs> but uh nah bro do we have a date for ryan garcia and uh mm -mm. and luke campbell they're saying it's gonna be in november but we don't have one yet i'm really excited for that fight i do want to see where this kid's at man i'm getting like i'm getting real live excited i want to see it i'm excited for that i'm excited for uh the charlo double main event I'm excited to see uh, Tank Davis really uh, burn Leo Santa Cruz at the cross. But do you think you think you think it's gonna be that easy though, bro? For Tank? Yes, yes, so? I do. It's gonna be it's gonna be a hell of a night. It's gonna be a it's gonna be Mayweather Gotti. Oh shit! No, don't say that. Damn. It's gonna be it's gonna be like that. It's gonna be an entertaining one way action, a one sided and, beating, the likes of which we haven't seen since then. Damn. I like those kind of fights. That's that like Mayweather got. I can watch that shit on repeat all yeah, night lying. long. That, man, is, that was an entertaining ass whooping. Oh yeah, bro. Like he he gave he he smoked that motherfucker turkey, man. Man, man the guy that was looking and, for the ref to help and all types of shit that night. Bro, oh, man. he hit that and motherfucker he, man, with a with a ten piece. The, the best part of that fight, it was in Atlantic City. Yep, sure was in front of. Man. But see, Floyd. But Floyd said that shit though. Floyd said that he was going to embarrass him in front of his hometown, in front of all his fans. He said that shit, bro. 
I remember the build up. The fucking build where, up was where is the uh Javante Electric Davis? Fire. Where is the Javante Davis Leo Santa Cruz bout gonna take place? Oh, LA. Or be in LA. Where is Leo Santa Cruz's home base? Yeah, that's LA. It's, that's his base right there, bro. Damn, the, man. My... The parallels are are so simple. It's so ironic. Bro, you right about that shit, though. That motherfucker might. Man, Tank might come man, in that, that boy man. come come out there. Cause I ain't like, you know, normally you see him fucking around on social media and bullshitting. Mm -hmm. That boy, yeah, he getting ready. He ain't been saying he nothing. He ain't been doing shit. He talk, he's about to talk his shit that whatever Saturday night they get in the ring, he gonna talk that shit that night. Yeah, I think he's gonna smoke that motherfucker turkey then. Not that not that, not that you he's break it down like that. Torch, he's gonna torch his tiki. Oh yeah, bro. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, look, going to the MMA news, man. Everybody know in the climate we in right now, man, we got a lot of bullshit going on with the police. Got, you know, the protests. The whole nine, bro. Well, Tyron Woodley, you know, he up fighting Kobe Covington, right? So at the press conference today for UFC Vegas 11, Every question that Tyron Woodley got asked, his fucking answer was Black Lives Matter. No matter what they asked him. Oh, I know Kobe Covington didn't, didn't like oh, that too much. No matter what they asked him. Mm -hmm. No matter what they asked him. I mean, and Kobe Covington was in rap form. You know, he was talking this shit, you know, basically saying, this is going to be easy money. You know, this, that, and the third. He wore a make was, he, was he trumping? He was trumping today? Oh, yeah, man. You know, he had to keep America great hat on, all that shit, man. And uh, and you know what you know what you know what hat he did wear though, what? the hat I had on the other day. Make races catch the fade again. Yeah, Tyrone Willie had that on. Yeah, he had that on. You feel me? I oh, had the yeah. other one. Make make races catch hands again and shit. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, so that I know that pissed him off. I didn't watch the the whole press conference, but from what I seen. You know, Tyron Willie was just doing that shit to get under his skin. I mean, you know, Tyron Willie is worked. from, but he is it from worked. St. Louis though. So, you know, that, you know, when the protest was going on out there in Ferguson, shit like that. Mm -hmm. So, and I think he is from Ferguson, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, he wasn't really doing the shit just to get under his skin. He, I'm sure he had a meaning behind doing it and he had a reason for doing it too. But yeah, you know, like I said, he just refused to answer any questions and he was just repeating Black Lives Matter the whole time. And I don't know if you, I don't know if we talked about this last guy that we, um, what it was, his name, I think it was a while back, man, a couple episodes back, he was a free agent. His name is Michael Chandler. He was coming from Bellator, man. Yeah. He just signed with the UFC. See? You know what I'm saying? That's the, that's the game that's in town, the, bro. That, that was the fighter to watch, wasn't it? No, no, he wasn't a fighter to watch, but he was one of the fighters, man, that was, I think he was a champ in um, Bellator, and he he was, became a free agent this year, and UFC swooped him up like a motherfucking eagle, you know what I mean? And uh, he playing on the sideline right now for Khabib and Gaethje, just in case some shit happened with that fight. He can I'm, step quite sure, I'm quite sure you fucked that man's name up. I'm not, I don't even know him, but I'm oh, sure. Oh, Gaethje? No, 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 I, I'm, I said that name right, Gaethje. <laughs> okay. I know I said that. <laughs> But, uh, and the Contender Series winners for this week, we got featherweight Danielle Wolf. She won a unanimous decision. She earned a contract. We got featherweight Colin Anglin. He earned a unanimous decision. He earned a contract as well. And last but not least, middleweight Jordan Williams. He got a first round TKO by strikes. And I think this was his second time in the contender series because he didn't earn a contract his first time. He came back and he got a contract. So it was like I said, out of the five winners, Dana White was impressed with three of these, these three. And like like we always say, man, we look to see what y'all can do in the future in the UFC, man. And no going back to Danielle Wolf, man, Danielle Wolf, bro, she big for her weight class, bro. She like six one. Bro. That's hey. Like featherweight. That's huge. That's a huge bitch. That's a huge bitch. Yeah, but I was looking at her and she muscular too. I was like, God 
Damn. Yeah, bro. You know what I'm Jesus. saying? Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy, bro. That's a huge bitch. <laughs> hey, hey, man. Look, look, bro. How tall you said that girl was, man? Man, she, she at least six one, bro. Featherweight. Hey, what, what's a what's a weight? Featherweight. Featherweight, bro. That's a huge bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Deuce Bigelow, man. Yeah, bro. That's a huge bitch. Oh, huge my bitch, God. Man. Yeah, bro. That shit was crazy. Mm. All right, JB. Is that time, man? Our fighters to watch. Mine is uh, the WBA junior featherweight titleist, Brandon Figueroa. He's currently 20-0-1 with 15 KOs. He's 23 years old. He's the younger brother a former lightweight world titleist, titleist Omar Figueroa. Uh, he's an entertaining fighter. He's won seven of his past eight fights by stoppage. And he's currently ranked number seven in the division by ESPN. All right. He's got a petit, he's, 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 uh, he can become a standout in the division. He's currently scheduled to fight Damian Vasquez on the 26th of this month. All right. That's going to be a big fight for him. Vasquez is 15 and one. And uh, it's going to be a, 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 a good fight. He, he can keep stepping up. And hopefully uh, we can see big things out of the young man. But he's one to watch, man. Brandon Figueroa. Our MMA fighter of the week is Mikael Pereira. He's a Brazilian mixed martial artist currently competing as welterweight in the UFC. Uh, he's 24-11 with basically a bright future, bro. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me go back. 